Ika Leichmann was born and raised in Taligrad. From a young age, he served in the Imperial Army, as the Leichmanns had always been a proud military family. Ever since he could remember, Ika had aspirations of joining the Reichsguard, an elite order of cavalry known for their courage and combat ability. Known for tipping the scales in countless conflicts involving the Empire of Man. Unfortunately, these dreams were cut short as he was discharged from military service after being caught in a horrific ambush along the Sylvanian border. Ica was part of a regiment tasked with guarding the areas and borders that separated the living and the undead. However, he was mercilessly attacked when an overzealous necromancer sought to expand the Sylvanian territory. The entire Imperial patrol was decimated, as wave after wave of zombies and other foul creatures swarmed their force. While Ica was one of the few fortunate survivors, being ordered by his commanding officer to escape to a different garrison and bring word to other patrols after realizing they were not going to win. The young soldier was wounded significantly, both physically and mentally. The Imperial military had no use for broken men, which led Ica to feel forgotten and worthless as time went by. While he might not have been able to achieve his past dreams of joining the elite Reichsguard, Ica would still work to serve, as his honor and dedication to the Empire had not faltered. After having enough time to recover from his wounds and meditate about his next course of action, he decided that he would become a volunteer and successfully convinced a high-ranking officer to allow him to work as a military wagon driver, helping bring requisition goods and supplies to military outposts across the Empire. This new duty went on for a while and started to really suit Ica more than he really expected. While the new position wasn't as glorious as being a front-line cavalry soldier, the ability to continue serving his nation was reward enough, especially due to his near-death experience upon the Sylvanian border. When Eichen Leichmann wasn't transporting supplies to various military outposts and armies, he spent his free time doing what he could to maintain the countless roads that snaked throughout the Imperial territories, to allow for a constant stream of supply lines and traders to distribute goods without issue. While it wasn't the Reich's guard, Ica loved his new duty, as the downsides of his time as an Imperial soldier, he was stationed in specific locations for months at a time. But, as a wagon driver, he was able to travel while still supporting the nation and military he loved so dearly. Ica had been a wagon driver for a year now. When he overheard a commanding officer in the logistics division speaking to other officers on how they were having trouble getting candidates for a specific supply line that went between the imperial capital of Altdorf and one of the northernmost cities of Kislev, Prague. Due to Leichmann's extreme sense of duty, he volunteered for the task. And despite the surprise of the commanding officer, he was accepted and quickly outfitted with a new and improved supply wagon, which could both deal with bad road conditions and the constant cold of the north. Upon receiving the new wagon and a document including the formal orders and 
related information for the task. Ica was on his way to Altdorf to collect the first shipment of goods to be transported all the way to Prague. I left the gates of Talgrad at dawn, wanting to make as much distance under the warming glow of day's light, since it is my intention to limit traveling at night as much as possible. I occasionally stopped at local villages along the way. While I had no issues with directions to Altdorf, it was nice to stop for a hot meal and cold drink, as well as converse with the locals since the life of a wagon driver can be one of loneliness. The roads were typical of an imperial trading route. The majority of the trip was on smooth paved road, while the short leg of it was on loose gravel due to a recent storm. After some time, Ica and his new wagon arrived outside of the gates of Altdorf. The city was even greater than he had imagined. Massive walls scraped across the landscape, encasing an almost ever-growing city in its protection. The city was unlike anything the man had ever seen. Countless buildings reaching up to the clouds, busy streets full of merchants yelling. He saw a group of young men running and playing without a care in the world. If it wasn't that he had a job to do, Ica would have spent a couple of days just taking in as much as the city could offer. After showing the military orders to one of the gate guards, Ica made his way to the supply yard where he would pick up the requisitioned items. The men in charge of loading the wagon were somewhat puzzled to find out that someone voluntarily agreed to take part in the supply line to Kislev, claiming only fools and madmen would agree to make that journey. This did not shock Ica, though, as these men have most likely never ventured outside of the walls of Altdorf, and traveling anywhere outside of the protection of the Empire would seem daunting. He had made countless trips in his time as a wagon driver, and he couldn't see why this would be any different. He had seen many things, too, including undead creatures. After the wagon was successfully loaded with dozens of crates marked with the distinctive signs of the Empire, and the workers said their farewells to Ica, he was on his way to complete his first trip to the Kislevite city of Prague. The majority of the journey up north was uneventful, with the only exception being at one point, Ica was approached along the road by a small force of Imperial soldiers. All they wanted was to know if he had seen a particular individual who was accused of being a local bandit leader. The bandit was being hunted for his supposed involvement in the destruction of a nearby village, which led to a dozen civilians being killed. Ica had not seen him. After a couple of more days on the road, Ica reached the land of Kislev, which welcomed him with an icy gale, in what seemed to be an endless snowstorm, which almost froze the man to his core. The further north he went, the worse the road conditions became, and the worse the weather would get. Ica traveled through heavy snow and frigid winds, even having to at one point pull into a northern village to escape the icy bite of the cold air. A few hours later, Ica successfully made his way to the city of Prague. However, unlike the beauty of Altdorf, the conditions of this city were much more decrepit, with almost a present feeling of decay. Prague had its reputation 
and Ica was well aware of it. But to personally experience the malign and uneasy presence that choked the air was another thing. When being a soldier of Kislev, there are two certainties of life, war and ice. Only the hardiest of people are able to withstand such a brutal way of life. And even still, lives are short and never comfortable. Ika met up with the main gate guard, a Kislevite soldier by the name of Yakov Rochev. When he came of age, Yakov joined up with the local garrison of Prague, where he found this way of life to suit him better than he could have anticipated. After completing training with relative ease, Yakov was assigned as a gate guard of the Southern Gate, where he would deal with inspecting supply lines coming into the city from the Empire and other nations providing support and trade. While most days were mundane, there were occasions where Yakov was sent off on raids and expeditions, usually dealing with Norskan raiders that ventured too close to the villages and settlements of Kislev. This life suited him, and he even looked forward to his next assigned post duty as to him, he and his family were being looked after, and they were giving far better lodgings and provisions than they could have ever dreamed of as being a simple farmer. After a short conversation with the Kislevite, Ika drove the supplies up to the logistics yard and dropped off his first batch of items. Ika was assigned a place to sleep, nothing too fancy but it would suffice. Nightmares haunted his mind that night. Terrible visions and a feeling of powerlessness suffocated him. On more than one occasion he woke up sweating and gasping for air. The next day, and without delay, he was back on the road to Altdorf to pick up the next shipment of goods. The ride back to Altdorf was where things started to become odd. Ika started to feel an overwhelming presence in his mind, almost like he was slipping into a deep sleep. Were they whispers? Perhaps it was a weight on his mind. Ika was not sure. His own body must be getting tired from the long travels, he thought. Perhaps the cold Kislev winds had fatigued him. After a couple of days of traveling through the realm of Kislev and the Empire, he returned to Altdorf and headed directly towards the supply yard to pick up the next shipment of supplies. The workers that Ica had previously met were astonished to not only see Ica alive, but also to come back to take part in another supply mission. The workers tried to convince him to take some time off to recover before he ventured out again, but he barely spoke to them. He simply waited for the cart to be loaded, and before long, he was back on the road to Prague. Time seemed to drag for Ica. This time, the journey was much more different. More and more villages seemed to be abandoned. Villages that once were bustling with travelers visiting the local inns to rest during their journeys. At one point during the ride, Ica had to hide in a dense forest from a group of northern barbarians that were raiding many of the villages that lined the road. The sound of what seemed to be unnatural creatures and their horrid screams filled the air. Blood-curdling screams of what seemed in between monster and man began to overwhelm Ica. 
as if someone was bringing a hot iron to his face. He started to fall ill. The more north he went, the more his pain would increase. However, he would continue to push on, to complete his duty. There was nothing else on Ica's mind but to reach the north, to reach his final destination. After several brutal days of traveling, Ica managed to make it to the same road leading to the gates of Prague. However, instead of entering the city, he merely continued traveling north, his eyes fixed on the horizon, all the while whistling a haunting tune to himself. Yakov and the other guards that had previously spoken with him watched in horror as his silhouette slowly faded into the white of winter until he finally disappeared. Every night I dream of that day. Aiko was a good and honorable man that only wanted to help people. However, even the greatest of men can fall to evil. There is no doubt that the ruinous powers had taken hold of him. While we men of Kislev have grown used to the corruption of chaos, those men of the Empire stand no chance. It is clear that Ica had decided to travel north, to join up with one of the chaos cults or even was compelled to travel to the realm of the Dark Gods themselves. However, I doubt he will even survive the journey. For hundreds of years, our Kingdom of Kislev has prepared for the day that Chaos decides to invade our world once again. But we did not expect that day to come. We were too ignorant to heed the signs, to listen to the warnings of the wise men. But now, there is no question about it. Darkness comes. On this channel, we are putting together narrative Total War cinematic battles and Warhammer lore videos. A special thank you goes to our Patreon supporters who help us in the making of more content. You can also join Patreon and earn extra perks while supporting the videos to come. Find the link in the description below. Make sure to subscribe, and thank you for watching. See you on the next one.